Yesterday, Sieroji spoke about the word Sambo Janga, how the prefix Sam means complete, and Bodhi means the knowledge which knows, and or else it means a person who knows. And Anga means the factors which support or <clears throat> the causes for the person to come come to be. So in this way, Sieroji explained um, the meaning of the compound word Sambojanga. So what are these helping parts? What are these causal factors? There are seven in number. And today, Sieroji will continue to explain in theory and practice. Sati Sambo Janga. That means this recollecting capability of Sati itself is a supporting cause of Bodhi. So one has to create Sati, one has to begin it. This is called Upadana, Upadana, to uh, bring it into existence. And from there, one has to develop it, that is, Vodana, to make it grow, to cultivate it, develop it. And this is Bhavana. So, to create sati and then develop it is satipatthana. When one develops sati, makes it grow, when it becomes complete, then what occurs is rakavarana goti. Sati protects the mind, the stream of consciousness and it keeps um, what is unwanted from coming in, keeps the defilements out. When there is good protection, then one has created a blockade, and the unwanted things are kept out. Of course, what is desirable, what is wanted, is allowed. So, one doesn't want the things which give us trouble to enter the mind. And so when they don't, there's goti, which means protection, security. There's, uh, with good protection, one becomes secure, the mind. So this is the natural characteristic of sati, to protect and, uh, protect and blo- blockade the mind so there is security. And if we develop sati, this is how it is. This is how the sati behaves. Yesterday, Sieroji spoke about pamara. And uh, in order, when we, what can eliminate this and bring us into the realm of apamara is this sati sambojanga, the the factor of. Sati. First of all, Sati has to become good. And one develops the forerunner path, Puba Bhaga Maga, and Vipassana knowledge arises. Beginning with discerning Nama and Rupa, mind and matter. Vipassana knowledge develops stage by stage. It becomes mature and then reaches completion. And at that time, path knowledge arises. Path knowledge is Sambodhi. Or one can say that the one with the knowledge of the Four Noble Truths comes to be. And at that time, one will understand quite well how sati is a support for 
Sambodhi. Sati has four kinds of objects uh, that are like a pasture for it to graze. Sati always dwells on these four objects, always grazes on these as they arise one by one. The first of these is kaya, the collection of matter. Second is vedana, feelings, good or bad. Third is chitta, the clean mind and the defiled mind. The fourth is dhamma, various processes of mind and body various mental and physical dhammas. So these four, kaya, vedana, chitta, and dhamma, or matter, feeling, consciousness, and various objects, are the things which sati takes as its object. And these are the things which the yogis observe steadfastly. There are four kinds of observable objects. So in this, there is a large field of observation. And within this, one has to to see the small spots which are arising ever new. Kaya includes bending, stretching, standing, sitting down to standing up, going from standing to sitting, leaning, turning one's head, lifting, moving, placing, stopping, turning, blinking the eyes, opening and closing the eyes. There are many, many things. This is a very large uh, field of observation. And in terms of uh, the text, in terms of uh, literal, uh, in terms of the text, there's hardness, coldness, soft, softness, solidity, flowing, tension, vibration. There's the eye base, the ear base, nose base, tongue base, body base, mind base. And then there's the objects which come and strike these sense bases the visible object, the audible sound, the odor which can be smelled, the thing which can be tasted, the tangible objects, the imagined thing, objects of the mind, these various objects, sorry, these various objects come and strike the body base, strike the sense bases. And these are all kaya, or the group of matter, Kaya doesn't know, but it is known. It is known, so it is called, and it is called Kaya. So it's a very broad field of observation. And there are little, within this field of observation, there are little bits arising, ever new, bending, stretching, standing, sitting, lifting, moving, placing, stopping, turning, blinking, opening and closing the eyes. And then there's hardness, softness, heat, cold, all of these things, little spots which are arising one by one. And so this is, uh, these small things are occurring within a larger field of observation. And this is, this kaya is the object of sati. So as soon as one of these bits of kaya arises, then one has to observe it. This sati, or observation, at the start, there's remembering and there's missing. So, and at the start, mostly we miss, we miss the object. But this is not something to be depressed about because we just have to continue practicing, exercising, 
And if we develop sati, then it protects the mind. It, it protects the mind stream. So in one minute, if we have one, if we establish sati one time per, per second, then in one minute there will be 60 times the sati is being established. And if we can do this second by second, then the mind is guarded in that 60 seconds. So rekavarana goti occurs. The mind becomes uh, protected and sati establishes a blockade against the un, uh, unwanted things. And then there's security, goti. And when the mind is secure like this, then it is not subject to the domination of loba, greed, or dosa, anger. And this is called muti, or freedom. So when we have this, when the mind is free like this, has this muti a lot, then sukha arises, peace, peaceful happiness. But this happiness, this peace, is not like what we get from enjoying a, an object that we like, a sense object we like. It's a happiness that is far better, and it arises without us having to wish for it. So when there is security, then freedom comes, and then peaceful happiness. When one observes like this a lot, then uh, later on knowledge will arise and one starts to know bit by bit knowledge arises. And when knowledge arises, sati is described as upatita. So the word patana in sati patana, pa means exceeding or exceptionally good. And tana means that it is established on the arising object moment by moment. So this sati patana is the type of sati that is uh, established firmly on the object, exceptionally good sati. When we get to this point, sati has power. So it is called sati bala, the power of sati. And at that point, it is able to uh, control and rule so that pamara, negligence, doesn't arise. And it is said apamara pekka that it opens the path to, uh, to wholesomeness and to apamara. So at that point, satipatthana is occurring. The satipatthana, the sati is continuous one after another. And sati is exceptionally good at this point. And the word satima is used to describe um, one who has this very praiseworthy, good sati. So, establishing, uh, firmly establishing sati on the gross, uh, gross matter that arises, on the medium uh, scale matter that arises, on the very fine, subtle matter or rupa that arises. This firm establishment of sati is satipatthana. And as we are doing this, observing matter, feelings arise, feelings good and bad. And for the Vipassana practitioner at the start, mostly there's bad feelings, discomfort. So when, starts, when one starts to gain some concentration, then one knows uh, the suffering is near dukkha, 
dukkha, uncomfortable feelings arise very quickly when one gets, starts to get samadhi. When one practices samatha, it's the opposite. When one starts to gain samadhi doing samatha practice, then that's when we get sukha and peaceful feelings. So with samatha, it's easy to get sukha. And with vipassana, it's easy to get discomfort. So when these discom- uncomfortable feelings arise, uh, but then sati is there to protect the mind. So, so that uh, tanha won't arise because it is said dukhi sukhang patiyati that when one is experiencing discomfort <clears throat> there's craving for comfortable things sukha so this is tanha and when one has comfort sukhi bio hati when there's when one is experiencing something comfortable happy peaceful then one wants more if there's craving and neutral feelings are they're neither dis, uh, uncomfortable nor comfortable but because they are gentle and subtle uh, they are classified together with sukha uh, comfortable comfortable feelings so in all these cases feeling uh, whether it's discomfort comfort or neutral feelings craving tanha can arise and at the upper stages the <clears throat> feeling that people experience is mostly upeka vedana the neutral feeling it occurs a lot and if the yogi enjoys this then they won't gain the dhamma so the <clears throat> the main thing is that there are good feelings bad feelings and neutral feelings and so that craving will not occur whenever a feeling arises one has to observe it and when the discomfort uncomfortable feelings are extreme then one has to reduce one's effort one has one has to note in a more relaxed way and when uh, when one can't bear it any more then one can just leave it for a while and go back to observing kaya and uh, then one has to work in this way because if every time uncomfortable feelings arise the yogi changes position the yogi will never be able to gain concentration so one who favors their body and regards their life and limb uh, will not be able to progress in the practice so as much as possible one needs to be patient and bear the discomfort and doing so uh, observing the feelings is vedana nupasana satipatthana observ- observation of vedana sometimes the mind goes here and there sometimes it wanders and then it may go to an object that it likes and lust might arise so we have to note it and then the mind will become clear again clean again we have to note that sometimes the mind is associated with dosa anger we have to note that and then the clean mind arises we have to note that too sometimes the mind arises together with moha confusion that needs to be noted sometimes the mind arises together with the scattered mind that has to be noted so in essence there's the clean mind and the defiled mind and whatever mind arises one has to note it if we do satipatthana is occurring 
Then there are various objects, wanting sense pleasures, uh, resentment, worry, remorse. Whether good or bad, all dhammas need to be noted, observed. And if there's nothing special happening, then one puts one's mind on the abdomen and observes the rising and the falling so as not to miss a single one. So when a person is able to establish sati all the time on ordinary kaya, as we are now, someone who is able to practice in this way so that sati is always established, then the sati becomes good. And it becomes exceptional and firmly established. So at that time, there's almost no misses. If the yogi misses a noting, they know immediately. They know what they are able to catch, and they also know what they miss. So this is special. And when one knows like this, with every newly arising object, the mind falls on the object and plunges it, plunges into it the way a stone just drops and sinks into water. It's not like a cork that bobs along on the surface of the water. This is what is meant by apilapana. It doesn't bob like a cork. It plunges and sinks into the object like a stone as soon as the object arises. And in this way, sati's natural characteristic becomes clear. Sati protects and guards the mind to make it secure. And when that happens, the respectful yogi knows the value of sati. A yogi who is careless, their sati and their mind too, will just bob on the surface. For the respectful yogi, Sati sinks into the object like a stone sinks into water. And this is, we need to practice and exercise so that we can develop sati that is like this. When we observe the rising, there may be tightness or tension, stiffness. And if the mind sinks into the object of the rising, then one knows, the mind will know the tightness that is there or the tension or the movement. And this is because sati is firmly and steadfastly established on the object. This is the start of knowledge, one's own knowledge. Then one comes to know cause and effect when one is, one is noting the falling, it disappears. And then the mind that knows it is no longer there. And when one notes the rising, it disappears. And then the mind that knows it also doesn't occur. So then there seems like nothing, just a big gap. But knowing is there. So one understands that only if the object arises does the mind which know it, which knows it, arise. This is the start of samboti. This is the start of knowing completely, knowing by oneself. Not knowing because a teacher told us, nor because we read it. And then sometimes as we watch the rising, it happens stage by stage. There's two or three risings in a row and then falling. It happens in stages two, falling two or three times. And later as we continue to observe, it, it comes and goes in a very fleeting manner, uh, many risings and many fallings. So then Sambodhi is occurring 
And then one comes to see Nibbana with a path knowledge. So at that time, one who gains this knowledge will know that sati is a supporting cause. One will know that sati is a factor that occurs together with knowledge. In a case or task that is to be done together, there is a leader and there is a group. Sati just needs to note each arising object. The yogi just needs to work to observe each arising object so that sati sambojanga can become complete. Developing this factor is very important. In one's body, there's a big field of observation that includes kaya, Vedana, Chitta and Dhamma, matter, feeling, consciousness, and Dhammas. And in the large field of observation of Kaya, there's hardness, hardness, softness, heat, cold, warmth, and so on. And if one observes this a lot, if one observes these a lot, then the forerunner path factor of samasati, pubabhaga, samasati, maganga, this uh, right observation that is a path factor of the forerunner path, this will arise. And when this, the energy, the power of this sati is fully developed, then one will... Um, then the, the noble path factor of samasati will arise. And at that time, there will be an end to this stream, the uh, stream of mind and matter that is arising and passing away. And there will be apavata, the cessation, the stop of, of the flowing stream. And then the path factor it will be apavatta uh, sati sambojanga or arya sati sambojanga that means the factor of enlightenment which is pure and clean and at that time one will this sati will observe nibbana Only when the forerunner path factor of samasati, poba bhaga samasati maganga, only when that arises will the noble path factor of samasati arises, arise. That means that until the forerunner path factor of samasati arises, the noble path factor of samasati will not arise. So if one wants to realize Nibbana, then within the large field of observation, whatever kaya, vedana, chitta, or dhamma, whatever matter, feeling, consciousness, or general object arises, one has to work to develop sati that is firmly established on the arising object. One needs to work to develop pubabhaga, the forerunner path of samasati, the forerunner path factor of samasati. So don't let your sati bob on the surface of the object. Try to observe so as to establish sati that sinks into the object every time the object arises. This is a very important thing. So today, Sayadaji has spoken about sati sambojanga. And if one is careless, then pamada will enter. So, uh, one should one needs to be careful if the 
If the factor sati sambojanga arises, then the other factors of enlightenment will surely arise. And as we are working to develop sati sambojanga, the enlightenment factor of sati, sometimes the mind retracts. Sometimes it gets bored and it doesn't want to do anything at all. And sometimes the mind, because it sees something good, it experiences something good, it becomes elated and then it gets away from us. So then we need to try to balance the mind so that it's uh, neither retracting, neither uh, refusing to work, nor elated, but in the middle. We have to work to balance the mind in this situation.